Dark Money by Jane Mayer, written by an investigative journalist from The New Yorker. This book is one of the most ridiculous books I've ever listened to, and that's one of the reasons why. Earlier this year, we talked about Bad Blood by John Carreyrou, and if you don't know about that book, I'll say this. In my experience as a reviewer, if you are a investigative journalist and you write a book that centers around one or more businesses, that means that one, someone is doing something they shouldn't be doing, and another person is going to expose it like crazy which means that too this is about something that so 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 many people know nothing about but at the same time is probably worth knowing about and thus very important so as the makeup artists whose videos i watch with my girlfriend like to say this lady is Spilling the truth tea. Talking more than anything about David and Charles Koch, the two owners of Koch Industries. I think they're two of the 10 richest people in the world. Their activism is allegedly called philanthropy, but they wanted to pour as much money as possible with as little political disclosure as possible into how we think and vote in America. Think and vote in America. And for years too. If they still do, well, our president is a billionaire, and I'm not sure that I'd be surprised. Some people have called them the standard oil of our times. If you don't know what standard oil is, in terms of business, it's one of the biggest things that ever happened in America. Standard oil was so insane that it had to be shut down by the government, and the government had to pass new antitrust laws just because of how foul their business practices were. These brothers hated Obama, like so much. I think one of them died a month ago. A lot of this happened, pretty much like all of it, for a while, of course, until the author gets involved. People could say under the radar, but this wasn't under the radar. This was like underground. These guys are so conservative that they pay the government to do what they say. And many other billionaires, allegedly. After the intro, the author talks about the history of the brothers, and their two other brothers as well. The extreme, abusive, disciplinary in nature of their collective childhood. The way they were raised, ideally, nowadays, would probably be illegal. And here's how extreme the whole mindset was from the beginning. Charles, the older of the two, wanted to basically erase the government. Because the government, after he grew up, was ultimately the only thing in the world that had the ability to tell him what to do. And that's how much he hated being told what to do because of his childhood. After listening to this audio, I mean, I didn't take politics all that seriously, but after I listened to this audiobook, I started taking politics even less seriously. Talking about a large environmental case, and there's like a whole, this whole chapter also talks about like, there's a lot of environmental problems that these guys caused. Someone said, they lie about everything and they get away with it because they're a private company. They've obstructed every step of discovery. It was always, I didn't do it. It's not our well. It's not our pipes. You can't believe anything they say. They definitely don't play the game the way the other companies do. I have just never heard a book that takes this much aim toward this ongoing silent war between business and politics. The author then smashes the like button, in case you haven't already, to talk about when Obama was elected and how these guys completely shat all over him and, they sh and how they shat all over a bunch of other people. And Obama and his administration really didn't know what to do. Now, I don't know how or why he managed to win two terms of presidency and not get impeached and or assassinated at the same time under what these guys were doing, but I also don't mean to come off as biased by saying that, because if the same thing happens with Trump, I'm not sure I would be any more or less surprised with all the problems, all the actions and whatnot of this book have caused. But if he wins a second term, good for him, I guess. Basically, throughout the book, there's just a very heavy emphasis on how these people are using the most ridiculous amount of money, more than anyone else who has more money than they do. It's really petty if you think about it. <laughs> and how they're basically using that money to buy, buy elections. elections. Now, I think a good 20% of this book, maybe even more, isn't really as necessary as the rest because of that emphasis. But some of the ideas start to repeat themselves constantly. I don't know if that's to reinforce the idea or the point of the book, but my biggest problem with this book is that the diversity of angles that the author hits these ideas with over time, I just don't think all of it results in the reader or listener ideally feeling any more educated than more swayed toward whatever side they're on. A few years ago, I found out that there's a name for my political beliefs. 
independent. But I don't wanna talk about that. I just wanna to touch on this with you guys on a bigger picture level in just a second. So most of the negative Audible reviews, because of why I just said, said that the, the book, they called it biased. But you can see the bias in their word choice alone. And it's just, people react and react. I'm reacting. I think the divide of the two parties and what has caused that is that our identities are in those parties now. And how many of us even see it like that? Like the other person has to be wrong. So I'm gonna put all of my energy into the fact that I don't like that they think that they're right. Political views, I like to think are very important. They say a lot about a person, what they value in themselves, what they value in others. And those are extremely powerful things no matter who you are, no matter who you want to be. But when you take one side of this is the way things originally were and, and this is now a great country, so let's keep them that bit way versus now things are changing because that's life. And what this country was founded on is not actually what makes it a great country. What makes it great is maintaining its ability to adapt to the change. So if you take one of those sides and pour as much of money, a universal belief system of value itself that you can use to put a number on any personal sense of feeling, state, or identity. You pour as much of that as anyone else in the world could even slightly imagine themselves being able to. You pour it into one of those sides. You will create so much madness that the consequences, the way I see it, will inevitably be the greatest dents in the doom of your spiritual history and legacy as a human being. Quotes. He is such a tough negotiator that when it comes to 50-50, he takes the hyphen. Lost woman and dog. Reward for dog. The main reason rich people feel guilty is that the schools teach them that they should. I've always believed that when people give big money, they, maybe silently, expect something in return. Total liberty from rules is death to the lands. This is America. How many of you people want to pay your neighbor's mortgage that has an extra bathroom and can't pay their bills? Raise their hand! President Obama, are you listening? The whale that spouts is the one that gets harpooned. Do unto them. He finally realized that they would rather kill him than save themselves. The secret to my influence is that it has always remained secret. Direction one. I, more than anything, really just recommend this book if you prefer self-education over politics. Because if you don't, chances are you will only feel more strongly toward that side than you already do. And me, at least, I don't think that's worth it. Life will probably do that for you as it is. But I really think it depends on what you value and what you want. What I want aside from <laughs> to make self-growth normal, is for you to find what you want on the deepest, deepest level and chase it and go and go and smash that like button if you haven't already and just be yourself in the process. Direction two, if you like this book, <laughs> I definitely recommend Titan, the John D. Rockefeller Sr. biography by Ron Chernow. It, that book is kind of like this one, but it's definitely bigger. That dude was so fierce. Given what I know, these guys together would not stand a chance against him in terms of the size of the impact that they make. If they were against him in a business venture, they would literally probably actually like straight up die. And the wealthiest American in history Today, he would be worth $400 billion. What he did was even more unfair than what these guys did. And yet, in the end, no one in the left would actually end up hating him. But why? Check out his bio to find out. I definitely liked it a lot more than I liked this book. I did find this a very interesting book, though. Dark Money by Jane Mayer. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I don't know why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe. But if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.